Good morning. Welcome to our Eucharist uh, broadcast from the Church of St. Peter and St. Paul, West Clandon, on this third Sunday of Advent, or Gaudete Sunday. We start our Eucharist by lighting our third Advent candle. As light in our darkness, as hope in our hearts, come Lord Jesus. Oh, come, thou key of David, come and open wide our heavenly home. Make where safe the way that leads on high and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we worship Almighty God, we sing our first hymn, uh, our first hymn together, Christ is the world's true light, its captain of salvation. Brothers and sisters, on this Sunday of rejoicing in the midst of Advent, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate with joy the sacred mysteries of Christ's love by calling to mind and confessing our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. You come to us 
in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found an acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. We hear our first scripture reading, which is read by Mary. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice, I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came 
as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. They said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Our sermon this morning is um, given by Helen, and I'm just going to come forward very briefly to plug the camera in. Um, Hopefully you can still hear and see everything and the telephone won't run out of battery. So um, we're now going to hear our sermon this morning from Helen. In our Gospel reading today, we find that the Pharisees are very confused and doubtful and questioning. I wonder what it might have been like to be part of a good law-abiding Jew. And so I wrote a story. They were talking about him again last night, the madman, how everyone was going into the water, how his message to repent about the one who was to come after him. Oh, rubbish, I say. They've been promised a Messiah forever. I doubt he will ever come. They just want to believe he will. He won't come, not to us, not now, not ever. Fools. And there's no way I'm going to get myself soaked in that murky piece of water they call the Jordan. And what have I got to repent about? I'm trying to be a good person. I look after the old man in the lane and his family. I'm kind and generous to my friends and family. And I obey the laws, well, mostly. But who doesn't slip up every now and then? It's not like I've killed anyone, although I might do something to my wife if she doesn't stop talking about this Baptist fellow. Just go and listen, she says. You will change your mind. Rubbish, I say, but she went on and on and on. So here I am, embarrassed, hiding behind this bush. The grass is dry and spiky and is sticking into my knees where I'm crouching. And I can't see awfully well because the bush is thick and thorny. I can see him, though, on lots of people in the water, and even more on the shore. I can hear his voice, but not quite what he's saying. There's another bush a little way down the hill, and I amble towards it, pretending to have lost something. The next bush is just the same, but smaller, and the thorns are scratching my face. I can see him more clearly now. What a mess. A real prophet would take care of himself, wouldn't he? Or somebody would. There must be hundreds of people down there, and they aren't all locals. There's nobody doing any work today. I see Benjamin, my sister's boy, who should be stacking the pots in our kiln. I'll have some words to say to him later. The voice rings out, but the words are still not clear. If I go down to where Benjamin is, I can say that I was looking for him. I'll hear better there. 
I scramble down and I'm next to my nephew faster than I intended. I see next to him are other people I know, people that I respect. What is going on here? The voice continues. I still can't hear exactly what he's saying, but they seem to resound throughout my whole body, like warm oil poured over my head, calming, comforting, yet strangely prodding and biting as if there was hot spice in the oil. Oh, this is pathetic, weak and stupid. Get a grip, man. This is just a tramp in the wilderness, shouting and pushing those who should know better into a dirty Jordan. I try to turn and walk away, but my feet refuse to move. My ears strain to listen to the voice, and my eyes watch unblinking at the happenings in the water. I walk purposefully to the front of the crowd. If I can hear him properly, then I can make a decision about whether to stay or go. That's the best thing. I'll just go and find out about him and what he is saying. Then I can explain to the family that this is all madness. As I move, I begin to doubt the choice is mine. I move as surely as I was putting up the end of a rope and being pulled. I tried to stop, to turn around, and my heart was beating in panic. If I go back up the hill, I will be alone and lost and desperate. I walk, no run to the edge of the water. I can hear now, return to God, repent of your sins, be baptised, be cleansed, be ready for the one that follows me. I look down and find my feet in the water. I do not feel the cold. My sandals and robes are wet, but all that matters to me is the man before me. I don't notice the scraggy body or the unkempt hair or the sack he wears. All I see are the most piercing eyes I've ever seen, the greatest smile I've ever seen, and arms as wide and as welcoming as I've ever known. Unseen hand takes my arms and lower me gently into the water that seems now no longer dirty and fishy, but pure and clear and holy. The water fills me with fire, all the wrong burned out. I should be in great pain, but there is only peace and love to feel. And as those gentle hands lift me to the surface, I see those incredible eyes, and I am filled with the greatest joy that I have ever known. Now I understand. Sometimes it is really difficult to understand what makes us believe that there can be something that is bigger than any of us can imagine. Yet in the face of all those who would try to prove that science has all the answers, those that would ridicule us for simplicity and ignorance, there is something stronger that defies reason, that is so fundamental to what we are, that it holds on to us and will never let go. I met a man once, he said he had given up on being a Christian, but it seems that he had not given up on believing in something that was bigger than us. And that's the creative force for good, that we are all part of, that we call God. And maybe it is beyond human understanding, but I don't think that matters. Let us declare our faith in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We, hear, we now join together in our prayers of intercession. Our prayers this morning are led for us by Jane. <clears throat> Let us pray. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, in this season of Advent, where we prepare in hope for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, let us remember the words of St. John's Christmas Gospel. The light shone in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. May we hold to these words in these dark and unprecedented times, and remember that there is hope in the light of your love. And we give thanks for the hope brought by the miraculous vaccines and the skill and dedication of the scientists and doctors who have striven so nobly to produce these drugs in such a short space of time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Pray for all leaders at this time, whether world leaders, national leaders, or social leaders. Help guide them and inspire them to make safe, wise, and compassionate decisions. Pray for the leaders of our church, our bishops, Andrew and Joe, and we pray for our own clergy, Barnaby, Douglas, and Helen. We thank them for their care of us. And we commend Barnaby for all the hours of work and care that he takes in constructing the filmed services for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Pray for the Queen, our symbol of dignity and stability. Pray for our Prime Minister and all our government as they grapple with the problems of a pandemic on top of the Brexit negotiations. Guide them to keep us safe and stable. Lord, in your mercy, Hear, our, Hear prayer. our prayer. Pray for all those who have lost their jobs and those whose way of life must change. Pray for those working from home in difficult circumstances. Pray for all those working in the retail world, the hospitality world, or in the in entertainment industry whose future is so uncertain. Pray for the young, whose education is being so sorely interrupted, for students, whose university life is so strangely different. And pray for the elderly, many of whom have to live in lonely isolation. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah, our prayer. Okay. We give thanks for all our wonderful doctors, nurses and carers who month by month 
care for the nation in times of extreme stress. And we give thanks for all those in their everyday lives. Keep the country running to a degree of normality. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Pray for ourselves. Pray for the sick. Pray for anyone who is struggling in mind, body or spirit. Pray for the bereaved. And in a moment of quiet, pray for those known to us who are in need of your care. Please pray for Ranald and Hilary McKinnon, Delia Baker, Doreen Rawlings, Jean Forley and David French. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. Restored by the presence of your Son, in whose name we pray, Heavenly Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, the sake for the sake of, of your Son, our, our Saviour, Saviour Jesus, Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread which we offer you. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. of this water and wine we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine which we offer you fruit of the vine and the work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. sins and wash away my iniquity. Now that be God. <coughs> Father, may the gifts we offer to you be a continual sacrifice of praise. And as we proclaim the Lord's death, Accomplish your saving work among us until his return in glory. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation. Confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Peter, St. Paul, St. Thomas of Canterbury, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father. 
forever and ever. Amen. Formed by divine teaching and at our Saviour's command, with boldness we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. The Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The Lord Jesus Christ is present with us wherever we are if we receive him into our hearts with thanksgiving. As you look upon the gift of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in this sacrament upon the altar, take a moment of quiet and prayer to receive Christ into your hearts, perhaps using the prayer of spiritual communion in your order of service.
God of mercy, may this Eucharist bring us your divine help. Free us from our sins and prepare us for the celebration of the birth of our Saviour, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. <clears throat> thank you so much for joining us today and a particular thank you for all those who are involved in making this service uh, happen. Thank you to um, Mary and Jane for the reading and for the prayers of intercession, for Tessa and Sebastian for the music. Um, I never say thank you to this person, but thank you to Caroline for making sure that everything happens so smoothly in the background. Um, and thank you so much as well to Helen for um, a really, really wonderful sermon. Thank you so much, Helen. Um, hopefully some of you will have worn pink on this Gaudete Sunday at home, as I, meant, as I suggested you might in my letter. If you have worn pink and you want to let us know, why not share a photo on Facebook of you wearing your wonderful pink costume on um, Gaudete Sunday? We're now going to sing our final hymn, The Lord Will Come and Not Be Slow. <clears throat> Steps cannot err. Before him righteousness shall go, his royal harbinger. True, from the earth like to a flower shall bud and blossom then, and justice from her heavenly bower. Look down on mortal men. Rise, God, judge thou the earth in might, his wicked earth redress. For thou art he who shall by right the nations all possess. For greater thou Wonders great by thy grace on hand are done. Thou in thy everlasting seat remainest God alone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you. Scatter the darkness from before your path and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>